What's going on, people? Welcome to episode 14 of the Trinity, powered by Dango. Dango. <laughs> yes, yes. Episode Dango. 14. Welcome to United View. Welcome to the Trinity Podcast. Myself, Owen, KG. We're back for episode 14. We are way on our way to doing our 10,000 hours slash episodes. That is the goal. 10,000 episodes. So I don't know how old we'll be. By the time we do it, I, I was going to say, Flex, I was doing the math very quickly there. I went, 10,000 weeks. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a sticky one. It's a bit, you know, I don't know, I don't know how close we'll get, but yeah. they say you do 10,000 hours. And but then you can't count the hours that we just are live and I know. We've probably done 10,000 hours. How many hours have you done since, since, I don't know, how many hours inception? You What's your night of view? Three years now. Yeah, well, just know. just doing just a quick Google. If we were to do ten thousand episodes, it would it would probably it would take one hundred ninety one years. <laughs> all right, so it's so okay. Well, I tell you what, we all stay healthy. Make sure we have the right stuff. Give ourselves the best chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, but big up to everyone watching. Haven't won a title. Can you imagine we still haven't won a title as well. Yeah, two hundred like, years. <laughs> and it's, so are you saying you know people in the comments? Are you saying that? Yeah. <laughs> Two thousand years in, we're going ah, players or manager. Nah, I think in that time you gotta say like, what's Kobe thinking of bringing on? What you, you know, some yeah. random <laughs> Kobe's kids. Oh yeah. mate, honestly, it'd be mad. Um, we got a lot to get through in this show, man. Big opinion, big um talking points as per usual. It's been another crazy week for Man United. When is it not? Um, I wanted to start off uh, today's show, um, mm. kind of um talking more about this Eric Ten Hag to Bayern thing and like they're interested in him says Christian Falk you know he lost a bit of credibility so you can't really a lot <laughs> so you can't really take his thing as like it's happening or anything like that but this is what the Trinity's for it's for these hypotheticals it's for whatever we're thinking in our brains that we just want to discuss that have to be real can't tell us anything um what would that look like like a role reversal of say Tuchel came here and Eric Ten Hag went Bayern Munich. And like, do you think there's any truth in it anyway in general? Is it just a load of rubbish? Uh, I just want to see what KG, you got think. KG, what, KG, what do you think about this? First of all, have you seen it? Well, this is new news to me. So no, wow, I, this is, I, I kind of, you know when, when, you, when you start saying a story you, you tell and you see, and you see the, it. the eyes start to narrow, the eyes start to narrow, they go like this, he goes, you know, <laughs> so... Do you want me to find so, the actual yeah. tweet, KG? I'll find the actual because there's 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 I, I'm there's, literally there's typing up Christian Folk, so I wanted yeah. to see what you're saying because has he done that tick thing that he does? Yeah, he does. They're, well, they're, they're it's a green mixture. Crosses. They're green crosses. They're green crosses. So he oh, says, Bayern. new name on Bayern list. Eric Ten Hag is also being discussed at F uh, FC Bayern. Thomas Tuchel is still interested in the job at Manchester United. Tuchel doesn't want contact with United before the match against Real Madrid. So he wants to get that out of the way first. And then he's going to assess his future. Of course, though, KG, if they did go for Eric Ten Hag, that would mean he'd be a fourth choice after three people have already rejected them. Of course, we've got um, Xabi Alonso rejected them. Julian Nagelsmann rejected them. Ralph Ranick, Ralph said no. And possibly they could be going to uh, to Eric, who does have ties to Bayern Munich, of course, before he managed their uh, their second team, didn't he? So, yes. yeah. What do you make of it? This is mental, man. I think um, we're in overdrive of like super media talk. Him going, Him going there... It like it's tough because I know um if I'm just imagining him leaving, I know Ajax really want him back, you know. And again, he's gonna need some time before going into another job if he if this doesn't go his way. But the kind of man and the steely kind of attitude that he's got, turning down Bayern Munich, the main job would be very difficult for him. There's some really good players. There's players that he spoke about to Gary Neville about that he wanted. Kim Min Jae's there, Harry Kane's there, you know. So it, there's a situation there that could that could suit him. But again, it's now there's that argument of you know when he what the kind of play style that he has, and he likes to play the youth. So some big players could Muller, you've got no chance. Get the hell out of there. There's a lot of players that he would that don't run enough, that are not as athletic enough. It could still be a problem. If I'm if I was Ten Hag though, just to really round up and finish this question is, I would rather go back to Ajax. I go back to Ajax and rebuild. I go back to Ajax and say because you'll you'll just be a god there, and then then 
you know, learn a few more things and then go back into the main into the main space. Do you want to ruin that though? Because I mean, Ajax, Ajax are in a bad yeah, spot at the moment. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he's the type of person to make. And again, no disrespect to Ajax, but it'd be somewhere where he's been, and it would, it would, it would have the perception, wouldn't it, of he went from Ajax to you know the big leagues, as it were, didn't work out, and then he goes back home and kind of. I don't think he'd do that. I think. And again, it it depends because I, I still because I really I know he loves it, but they always say sometimes never go back, never go back because you only make it worse. Look at Ronaldo, you, you, you don't touch the legacy. Pulling apart without him, isn't it? You know they exactly, like... exactly, exactly. But and you've got to remember, and I think actually with them, you want to talk about the perfect structure, perfect environment. That's been an absolute nightmare. Do you want to walk yes, back into you. that with that without that structure above you in the right place, all that kind of stuff? Edwin's not there, Marco Mars isn't there. Talk about how important all of that is. Do you, want to, you, you want to be very careful. I understand what you mean by he might get more leeway because, of course, he's Eric Ten Hag. But at the same time, I think if he were to leave Manchester United, and I still don't know, I still really do think it is maybe not 50-50, but I still think his future is still up in the air. I don't know. I, 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 do, I, I honestly feel it's tough to call. I think it's tough to call. I think he's our manager without, regardless, even with, like, He's going to be our manager next season. I, I, th- I still think it's tough to call. I still think it's tough to call in the sense of what have Ineos said? They've said, well, the amount of money and lack of viable alternatives. Let's say hypothetically, if Thomas Tuchel were to win the Champions League and then you've got the Champions League winning managers like, oh, I'd really like to come to Manchester United. You think Ineos wouldn't be like, that they look at that. They look at they look, they would look at <laughs> and and also and also Even seeing how the rest of the season it. and then seeing how the rest of the season play out. Say Man United don't win a game now between now and the end of the season, including the FA Cup, and it ends on a really sour note. Then they've got the option. They might take it. On the flip side, if Man United do win the FA Cup and it feels like there's a bit of momentum, they go actually. You know what? It is going to cost a pretty penny, and you know all that kind of stuff. Maybe they'll look at <laughs> a different direction. So my point being with with the Bayern thing is that would he go there and he would do well? I think it's the perfect argument when it comes to well, if he's got better players, he will do better. Because if he goes to Bayern, he will have he will have better players, won't he? Like you say, he will have Harry Kane. He will have well, he will have uh, Musiala. He'll have you know he's got he'll Um, have and and they'll go big in the summer because they don't win the yeah. So of course he he would he would he would do better. I suppose yeah, technical players. He'd be yeah, exactly, exactly. He would he would do he would do well there. But I. I said I think it's a difficult one to call because I still don't know what's going to happen with him next season because I still think there's more there's more to happen. I don't, isn't there's still more the to happen. Flex, isn't it a sign of the time then, for the simple matter that he's still reputable manager? Like people would still have a serious look. Yeah, he'd be in the um, yeah, of course. You'll be in the mark. He's not yeah. like a, he's, he's not a bad he's, coach. He's never been. Not, he's this never is been a bad a manager. Ollie. No, this is not a this is not a Ollie thing. <laughs> whereby like yeah and when he leaves here who's gonna want him what, what's he gonna do what's his yeah. credentials like it's not that and that's why people push back when they say like well hang on a minute this manager hasn't turned bad overnight or not even overnight in this one season like it doesn't mean he's just rubbish it yeah. can't it's impossible yeah. and furthermore we've seen this at man united this is what it does to players and managers everyone comes in with this amazing reputation and they leave with it in tatters where they're picking it up off the floor and got to scrape it off the floor and rebuild it again, whether that's a player's reputation or a manager's reputation. And sometimes they do rebuild it and sometimes they don't. But um, I do, I I think that Eric Ten Hag would absolutely, if he got relieved of his duties at Man United, he would snap, wouldn't even think about going back to Ajax for me. He would snap that up at Bayern Munich. He does have history there. In the set in the second team, but more importantly, massive club, better players. They have had they've clearly had their issues over the last three years. Like, let's mm. not paint that. Like, so there's a lot of rebuilding that does go on there, and a lot of insecurities that you can have. Like, you can win the league, might not be to the taste of how the board wanted it. You still lose your job. We've be seen an Argusman, can't you? You can be <laughs> an Argusman. <laughs> no, an Argusman finds himself chilling in the German job, like top job. Like, it's not it's not always indicative of you as a manager. But that's what's interesting about some of these super powerhouse clubs. When you look at PSG, I've been thinking about this, right? Because this is to kind of pivot into the Thomas Tuchel argument and just managers in general, right? I haven't seen many, if any, in recent history, managers come out of, go into PSG and come out looking better. Come out with their stock 
still like, what an amazing job. They've done this. They've done that. Unai Emery, it ha- the same thing happened. Thomas Tuchel, the same thing happened. Pochettino, the same thing happened. You can go there. You can say, say that again. So you haven't seen so what I'm what I'm saying is I don't really see people go in to like PSG, yeah, and come out of it almost like being bigged up. Do you see what I'm yeah, saying? It's not, it's not that kind of league. job. It's not that kind of job. The goal is to win the league. Exactly, league exactly. League. and, it, and it's really exactly until you, until those types of until you do it, you're a failure. But then what actually happens is is that. That then goes with st- stays with the manager, and it's the same at Chelsea. Let's say in recent years, because of what's gone on there. Um, obviously, Graham Potter's gone in as a good manager. He's gone out as a shit one. That's just what's happened. Mm. Thomas Tuchel um, was sacked by the, the, them straight away as soon as he got as soon as Todd Bowley and them man got there. Pochettino, I don't know if you heard his post match comments yesterday. He ain't got a clue if he's yeah, there's rumors. Mate. There's rumors about Hansi Flick. There's rumors about Hansi exactly. Flick. Exactly. So he don't him. know. So again, what I'm what my point here is is broken establishments break managers, but it don't mean that these managers are just dead. Like all of a sudden now, Thomas Tuchel, he's dead. Oh no, nah. that's, that's the same when managers get sacked rubbish, in general, though, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, because when I, usually, I hate that, I hate that. Usually, oh, got sacked. a manager gets rubbish. sacked. <laughs> yeah, like very few managers do what Klopp's done. Do what uh, uh, Pep's gonna Sir do Alex. whenever he decides to leave Sir Alex Wenger I know it was he went out on a on a whimper but he still do you know what I mean it happened on his own terms very few managers do that you usually get sad you have to be great no, you, have to, you, do this. you have to be great you know you're talking about a select few that can walk out in this way but then I, like do you know what's funny because it's it's really the next season where the managerial candidates will be more interested after the Euros is comp- after the Euros is complete, those managers, while they say they're getting in long term jobs and stuff, they're they're on the market now. Our t- um, who's this other manager? Um, Jabby Alonso will be on the market. If Tuchel walks, he will be back in work by Christmas in at some job. I don't know which one, you know, because there's again there's a lot of uncertainty now. Even with how the football how football is looking, Ange Postecoglou. While he's like, people got an eye on him. So it's it changes I, very uh, quick, innit? Next season is where you're going to see, I believe, the managerial market go crazy. You know, there's now at the moment, it's like slot that's going to Liverpool, but there's not like when I'm looking around for who are uh, like super candidates, you're not seeing. Yeah, you're not seeing a lot. That's Ineos's dilemma, isn't it? That That yeah. is the dilemma of Ineos at the moment. That's my theory as to why Ralph turned down the buying job. Because I think he knows. He goes, in a year's time, like, like KG says, when there's better people on the market, I'm gone. Like, I'm the third yeah. choice. I'm not going to... I've got a job here at uh, Austria where I'm doing well. They like me. Uh, probably you would think they'll qualify for, like, the World Cup or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's got this tournament coming up. And he's got another two years when he's going to be at the World Cup. And he's like... I could, go, I could go to Bayern, but I'll probably be gone in the year to KG's point when Javi Alonso comes available again or someone else becomes available again. So why would I do that? And I think the point that KG's pointing out there with like, even look at Liverpool, Klopp goes, and I think even probably those at Liverpool at the moment might be a bit like, probably not the best year for him to go because there aren't people around now because they've got they've got their third choice, haven't they? They've got yeah. a slot from uh, Feyenoord, but they wanted Javi Alonso. They possibly wanted the guy from the sport in Lisbon. It didn't happen. So I think for Ineos, that's where I think this does lead to Eric's benefit, where they might go, there's a lot going on. Maybe the targets aren't there if we wanted to make a change and we're on the fence about making it anyway. Maybe he then gets more time. And now now's the critical time for him. He said it in the press conference yesterday when he said, I'm having like daily meetings with Jason Wilcox. I'm having daily chats with him. And it was really interesting when he said, you know, we had a really good sort of plan before. Now it's about finding out what this kind of Ineos plan is. And now is the time to figure out like how far away were those plans? Were they pretty close? Do we think that we can overlap? Can we work together? Because I suppose in an ideal world, and this is why someone asked me the other day on, I think it was yesterday on the press conference thing, would you um, would you be happy if Eric Ten Hag stayed in the summer? And my answer was yes. So I, I want Eric Ten Hag to succeed. I want any Manchester United manager to succeed. And if he does stay... That would imply that he is aligned with Jason Wilcox and those people above him. And that's yeah. the best formula for success, isn't it? Um, so it's it's absolutely, I think, fascinating how this managerial picture 
across Europe has just flipped on its head in the space of a couple of months Literally. because we had Bayern job available. We had the Liverpool job available. We had the uh, Barcelona job available. And they've all kind of just <laughs> inverted on themselves, like Javi staying, Bayern can't find anyone. Liverpool got their third, third choice. And it's like... So this massive they... open market where Man United couldn't <laughs> afford to go to sleep it's because everything's moving. Narrow. It's yeah. now got really small. But here's the thing I wanted to bring to the table, guys, is... So I take that they're all really valid points. I actually I agree with with a lot of that. But I want to talk about Ineos's sort of where do we think they actually are then in terms of this decision? Because there are two sides of it. There's a side that Owen just said, which which is a big side, which is like, well, a lot can still happen. There's four games left. If we go out of a whimper, get smashed in the FA Cup final, and then it really is, or everything's just fallen down. Um, what is left? We got to change this vibe. And then there's the like, well, you know, I'm not saying we're going to, but they won four out of four the last few games, built up some momentum. Let's say we won the FA Cup or at least played well in it, even if it didn't win. I don't know, just some optimism, not enough suitors. Do we really think now with four games, basically what we're saying with five games to go, Ineos still don't know what they're going to do. Do we think that? Business I think as usual. Business I, I usual, honestly saw that they... I know, man. Like, I feel sure like it's weird. I just kind of feel like they've made up their decision already, but in the to positive, keep him. Arc, yeah, because yeah. It's like, I they, actually think that when, they, when you look at the reality, they come out the other day and said, "Look, we got hundred million to spend." You're starting to see even just, um, not saying just trying to get Dan Ashworth doing all these business moves and stuff. Nothing's going to be easy. Anything that you want is going to cost money. If you get a like a a good manager. I know um, two shows going, but then you have to pay off the guy that you have already because he's still got a year contract. And he's not, he didn't come on a small contract. We know we gave Ten Hard the bag. He will, he's a winning manager. We said, hey, can you look at can all costs? Come and fix this. Cost. Although, yeah. although it's a cheaper bag now because we didn't qualify for, qualify for the Champions League, by the way, because everyone's That's got a true. reduction. That's true. And it, I honestly feel that they, they can see with what is. There's this new stuff about, you know, salary caps and all this other stuff. And they're talking about reducing the wage list and stuff. There's things that there's pros that you can find in Ten Hag to say, you know what? It fits our situation. It fits the rebuild for the next guy. Even if it's for the next guy, he could be the guy for the, for the now. And then after when these other managers of it, because yes, I know the chance of getting a Jabby Alonso, very, very tiny. But then the other managers that people are looking at, the Amarins and all these other ones, there'll be a year, like another year of experience. So you will try to, um, you will try to bring a manager like that to your club. You will ask the question at least minimum, you know? So I, I just think that they'll, they'll probably say to themselves, you know what, let's see what he looks like in the system. If this works, we're great. Cause we gave him time and we, you know, we've done the right thing. If it doesn't work, well, now we've got a better group of managers who we can bring into the club. Mm. I do think that's, I do think that's part of it. I think the, the reporting that surrounded that I think is probably largely accurate, which is they're saying, well, as of right now, he's part of our plans. We're planning for the summer. We're planning for pre-season. There isn't a standout candidate. There isn't that one person. It would cost a bit of money. So you, to your, uh, both of you, to his point, I think that the, that would then lead you to think, well, the, he's more likely to be here next season. Yeah. But the only reason I say, I, I don't, can't say that with certainty is I still do think like, stuff can still happen. We've seen how much can change over the course of like one game or a couple of different performances. So I, that's where, and we're also then, if you, if we're saying that, are we say are we in agreement like the most like, if it, if he were to be replaced at this point, the most likely option would probably be Tuchel. Because not really anyone else being linked mm. to it at this point, exactly. is it? Right, so if, it, so, so, with, so if that, then it kind of depends, I suppose, on how he does. Because if he goes out of the Champions League semi-final at Real Madrid, which, look, their second legs at the Bernabeu, you probably still fancy Real Madrid to go through. Then it's a case of eh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll see how things go. So I still think there's more, there's more to happen. I don't think it matter. If I think it does matter. If he, if he wins the Champions League, it absolutely matters. Yeah, no, that matters. I'm saying if he doesn't win the Champions League, I don't think you're mad. I still think they'll bring him in. Like you, you were speaking to Flex one morning show, talking about that situation with Peter Schmeichel's. And it was the was most, weird. you're was right. Weird. It was the probably the most, um, what is bit of TV I've seen. Yeah. You know, Pierre Schmeichel was just spinning around. Yeah. And like, that's, that's weird. It wasn't even like, um, you know, when they do Champions League shows with Micah Richards and them guys, this yeah. was like 
a different type. And it felt like they all was in on a joke that they didn't want to tell the audience. Yeah. You know, so I a little part of me, and this is pure speculation, don't know anything. I feel like the club have already sound out too sure. And and I feel like conversations have already begun anyway. Like they think about how they've been moving. Is mm. should we be surprised at anything? No, think about how no. they've been. I would not be surprised if these if conversations already happened. And let's say because there is an opportunity that we could get embarrassed in the final, like heavily embarrassment. That's gonna that's gonna force their hand. If they if we end in embarrassment and we have to go on a long break and have to get people ready for, or maybe the Glazers would think like this, but then. You're talking about making money in in America on on preseason tour. Well, how are we going to generate funds? The old school guys would have just cut the head of um, the guy running it and said and tried to say, "Look, it's a fresh start. All you American fans, come and see us." You can't really get people excited for this if it's if it ends horribly. Like we we limp out and we don't we don't score we don't win any more games and then we miss out to the um we we lose the FA Cup. Who's going to come want to see us in um in America on preseason? They still will. That's, I mean, still, yeah, still, they, still, they, still, they still will. They will, but you want them coming with that. I can imagine when they do have their market means and them, them kind of conversations, that's a big part of it. They, they're thinking around all of these stuff. That's, that's why I think, like, with if that happens where we literally, if this is glass half empty vibes, you know, we the, the, we don't get another point this season. Um, we get beat heavily, or it doesn't matter. A loss is a loss in the final. It's win or, it's win or bust, in it? We don't win the FA Cup final. And then it's really low. It's like, you know, because if you don't win a, a point for the next rest of the season or you finish badly, don't get twisted. You know, that'll be Newcastle above us, probably Chelsea. Chelsea. Jesus. If, 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 if that kind of shit starts happening, there's a couple of ways of looking at it. Again, you can say, look, we, we already made our decision that we are going to stick with this. We absolutely made that decision knowing, clearly, we can see with our own eyes this... We were never going to put any form of plaster over what was happening in this. We can see it already. It's too late for any plaster already. Even if we sort of won three out of the last four games or something like that, like the season has been the season now. It's too mm -hmm. late. The The objectives have gone. You know, we've got teams near us that we thought wouldn't be not for the good. We've got teams above us that we didn't think would be. And we can't change that now. There's not even enough games. So that whole turn around the corner shit, it's all gone. So whatever decision they have made, has to be on the premise that we know that this is how shit it can be. Yeah, so I suppose so. I suppose how do so. they? So how do they lose more, and then it make, it makes even more outrage of like no? I yeah. Is it like getting battered by like Palace Monday night, lose two nil, get smoked off Arsenal, embarrassed? Is it like is is that what? What my question is, which I suppose we can't really answer, is like no. This is what, what I mean. is. What is that? What is like? What's the cutoff point? Yeah, what, that's that's what, what I've been. I yeah, that's that's what I've been saying recently. I is think there because 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 momentum can be both positive and negative, isn't it? Exactly. So basically, it's a case of I think to KG's point earlier on. I think if it was like well, if things ended today and we're Man United in the league sixth, yeah. they st we still sixth in the league. I think if yeah. if it was like the it's sixth, like we, fin we finish sixth. He pro and looking at the market dependent on what happens with Tuchel if he does a complete man to supply him. But most likely, we'd probably keep him because there aren't many, many alternatives. It costs some money. Let's move on and see what happens. But to, uh, to flex his point, I think it's just a case of like, but if it does go, if it gets bad, and look, let's face it, recently it's not been good. But if it gets even worse and we don't pick up wins, then maybe just that like desire of like, oh, maybe we're kind of forced into change that maybe that does happen. But I will stress, by the way, because I feel like this got like mixed up this morning. I thought in the interview he did with uh, Gary Neville, I thought he spoke very well. I thought he came across very well. I think That's it's the I'm most saying. open, I think it's the most open he's been on quite a lot of different topics. And I thought he, I think he's, I think the pennies dropped with him now that like that whole well, I don't want to talk too much about these subjects or I want to play nice with the media. Like at Manchester United, that just cannot fly because no, those guys, it, yeah. those guys in the press room, they will eat you alive. And even though, you know, you might ruffle some feathers with those above you, you've got to be a bit honest when you want to say like, oh yeah, I didn't get that play. And I want it. You've, you've kind of, you've got to play a game because it's got to be self-preservation. Because if you're thinking that those around you or above you are going to protect you, they won't. If you're thinking that the playing squad is going to protect you, they won't. So you kind of do have to do it, you know, uh, sort of fend for yourself. And I thought it was weird because 
some of the things I was pushing back on this morning and the reaction to it was, oh, you weren't happy with the interview. I've always, I think it's one of the best interviews he's done. <laughs> I really, I really yeah. do. And he came I, across I really well. It. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't, I'm going to. When gonna... you see it, you're going to, you will really yeah. like it. Do you know what? Yeah. And this is, I was thinking this year, I was saying that Ten Hag will come across well in their meetings with Jason because he knows what he wants to do. He understands football. Like he really can understand and he can speak about football well. Like when it comes to the, think of how excited he gets when you get into the technical questions. When you ask him a question that is like, you know, well, how do you see the team like developing their style of play? How do you, this is his, where he's very comfortable and where, you know, he can remove the BS and stuff like that. Now, this is where he's trying to get the, um, the club to. So I can imagine when he's talking to um, Jason and stuff, they're probably sitting down in their meetings thinking, you know what? I know this thing hasn't worked out, but you know exactly what you want to do. You're, you're fully aware. It's not actually, um, it's not showing on the pitch at the moment, but maybe if you do get your desired left center back, your left back, a solid back four, and um, the right piece to complement what you have now in terms of, because you went mad with the market, but maybe with us here, we could really cook. We could really be, we could really be onto something with this guy. Because I can imagine him being impressive in them one-to-one -one meetings. Like you saw how the, how you lot felt impressed with the sit down with um, Gary Neville that I haven't seen yet. Yeah, it could it could be. It's just a case of like you said. When you say he's very clear what he wants or how he wants to play, there's just is, and this is a million dollar question that we don't know. Is that what Ineos wants? Is is that what Ineos wants? Because he did a sort of again, he alluded to in that same interview about this whole game model thing. He said, oh, "We have a, we had a good game model here now, and Ineos have got their own one that they're bringing in." So it's just going to be a case of like if they feel like they can work together. The what the one answer, and we spoke about this this morning, didn't we? Flex the one answer that did kind of make me go, "That's the that's the risk." is when he was asked by Gary Neville, given the injuries, have you thought about being more defensive? And he basically said, we thought about it, but that's not why I was brought in. I was brought in to play proactive football. And that's the one where you sort of just go, that was right. A big one, yeah. He's he's willing to fall on his own sword because if he thinks it's the right way to play, the right thing to do and not to compromise his philosophy, which to an extent is quite noble, isn't it? That is unadulterated. I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in my system. If these players can't do it, they can't do it. But I'm not going to change because of some shitty players, sort of thing. Which is, which is again admirable. But you, then you sort of go, well, he, he doesn't. Then he must not care about self preservation because you would say when work. these games coming work. up, <laughs> get some work. results, and he's like, no, yeah. I want to play the way I want to play. Yeah. Which I, I like that you said it. I, I, I've, I how many how many time how many times have I said like if you're going through these tough moments and stuff, the thing that I've not been impressed with is, is the complete lack of going. We can't do this. This is you can't play like this. You can't. You got. I've got to get him in a bit. I've got to sit off a bit. I've got. I have to do something. I can't just keep rolling out the same way. Essentially, he's saying yes, I can. Actually, and he and he says we did think about that. So he's gone right. Let me think about this. Yeah. Should I sit off? Should I be more compact to get through this period of mad injuries, unlucky shit happening, players making dumb decisions? All of the reasons of why we've been bad. To get through it, should I should I compromise on what I really want us to do? And he said no. He Good. said I thought about it and I, and I said no. And then like this morning, KJ, I was saying, well, Ten Hag could actually have the last laugh out of this. And I hope he, I really do hope he does. I really because want if he gets to. His, Me too. that means if he if he gets his players back next season, new signings, gets players out, people are fit again, the people that he does trust. And he plays in this way, which, you know, the three one six rest defense, all these things that we keep hearing, all the buzzwords, all the phrases, you know, inverted fullbacks, Dallow coming into central mid, all of these things, building up with three, three across the back and stuff like that. We do see these things. We just see them not work and us get torn to shreds, whether it's Burnley or whether it's Man City. It's the same, whoever plays against us. That's what we've seen this season. That anyone can get it against us. They can get shots. They can get chances. Anybody is good enough to do it. But if he turns that around, playing that way, then fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, again, you have to. But you have to, like you said, self preservation. You got to keep your job, mate, and you better hope it's enough to keep it. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you not thought about too short at Man United? I have. What I else? got ripped. I got torn a new one on Talk right. Sport. Uh, on Talk Sport in the comments. Talk Sport's a different viewership in it, but I got rinsed. I used to listen to Flex. Yeah, he's just saying things for clicks now. Oh, yeah, just because he's... Because I said, 
Um, if Te- if Ten Hag left, I think Tuchel would be a good um, replacement. And again, uh, this context because Talksport will try to package it as get Ten Hag out and get me him. You know, that's the first thing. That's not what I said, but I did say if Ten Hag left, yeah, I do think he, I think Tuchel will be a good fit. I w- will put my argument forward to say that I think there's way too much disrespect on Thomas Tuchel personally. I still think he's a good manager. I think he's experienced. I think he's been at big clubs. And to my point, when I started the bit of the show, when I was talking about people passing through clubs and not coming out looking better, like, I just think that he's the last couple of clubs he's been involved with. They're very unstable clubs with with volatility and he's been successful. That's what I'm saying. Emery came out of PSG and... He's kind of bought up his credit again, though. He, he has now. That's what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying. You have to rebuild it after the after you go through with X club that brings it down. And Thomas Tuchel, if you look at his last three clubs in what PSG, Chelsea, and Bayern, Bayern. what what do they all have in common? They all have this sort of instability going get on. Get rid of managers quick. Get philosophy. rid of managers <laughs> quick. Philosophy. Yeah. We haven't not not seen it. In recent times, at least, and so do Man United, by the way. We're no different, (laughs) we're no different in that regard. We can't hold our head side and say we don't get rid of people quickly because we absolutely do. We've turned into those kind of, but then to be honest, that's that also that is kind of what football is nowadays. Like the manager's job is, I mean, we can talk about outliers, can't we? Like you know, Pep and Klopp and all that kind of stuff, but. The, the life cycle of a football manager at a club is far shorter than it ever used to be as well, like, you know, back Absolutely. in the day. And I think I do agree with Flex. Like, I was a bit, when I th- first thought about Thomas Tuchel and him coming in, I was a bit like, eh, I don't know, I'm not too sure, because he can switch between playing a back four and a back five. And I don't know if, like, a back five can actually work with the, with the squad that we've got at the moment as well, yeah. you know. I'm kind of worried about that. But what I don't like is, to Flex's point, this just... And and I get it. I I get people are really back in Ten Hag and support Eric Ten Hag. I, I really do, and I, I cannot stress it enough. I would I want Eric Ten Hag to turn it around at Manchester United yeah. because I don't want to see anyone do, yeah. the job. And and like Flex said, it'd be a fantastic story considering how close it's been this season and what have you. It would be great, and I and I hope that is the case. I really do hope that is the case. I think, but, he, he... but just because this, but just, sorry, KJ, just because yeah. of that. That that doesn't mean that like Thomas Tuchel hasn't won a Champions League or hasn't got to a Champions League final with PSG, which no one else has done. Maybe it will happen this season with Enrique again. And it doesn't mean that like you know he hasn't won at the Bundesliga at Bayern. Granted, he kind of got stumbled over the line last season. Dortmund really bottled it. But this this notion that if you've been sacked at a football club, that means you're not a good manager. And there's context behind every single one of the departures from from any club as well. So I I if Eric Tenag was to go, considering the market, I'd go Thomas Tuchel. That's, that's not that's not a bad it's not a bad option. Not a bad option. And the, and the key thing would be the same with him that it is Eric Tenag. If they are whoever the manager is, whether it's Ten Hag or whether it is Tuchel, whether it's someone else, if they are totally aligned with those people above him the Dan Ashworth, the Jason Wilcox, then that is the recipe for success. And if yeah. Eric Ten Hag is totally aligned with Jason Wilcox and Dan Ashworth, then he should stay because they believe he is the right man for the job and they believe in him. What we can't have is a situation whereby someone's in the managerial position and those around him don't believe that he can get it done and he doesn't have total support. That's what it's got to be. And... Um, and yeah, so I, I, I would I wouldn't be against it, but I would stress because I think this is lost whenever you do criticize Ten Hag. Like I don't I want him to turn it around. Like I don't yeah, hate uh, him. You, you know? said that you, trust me, they should know. But if they if, if people don't hear you saying that, then they just don't want to. No, they it. don't K- K- KG, we said it the other day, isn't it? It's not predictive text, it's predictive listening at this point. Like I don't we I think we as a fan base have to get better at this. The art of dialogue of like we can't you we can't do you it. say something, happens. I say something, we disagree. So you we kind of take the mick out of it, don't we? With the so so you so you mean or so yeah. you're saying. It's it's it is crazy. It is it is nuts. Like what for instance, like I said, with the interview that Tenag did, really good interview. And I think AG, I think when you watch it, you'll be like, I, I wanted to stay even more watching it, because that's been yeah. the reaction of quite a few people. But you were sort of pushed back on one of the answers going, this is the problem. This is why you want Eric Ten Hag to leave. And it's like, no, it's just, you can disagree on an answer. Observation. It's cool. Yeah, Observation. it's cool. Because right, there were bits that he said in it. And I know it's hard for you because you maybe haven't seen it or even heard all the quotes. But you no, know, some bits he said, you go, okay, well, that's that's fine. But then there is a fine line between sort of, like there was a bit where, he, obviously the bit about Harry Kane, yeah. 
where he's he, he says there was a player out there that we wanted to get, but we couldn't get him. We couldn't get him. Um, then so therefore I had to go with young talent like Rasmus, who will get there. I don't think it's fair to compare him to the. But before that bit, he, Harry Harry uh, Gary Neville goes. So you mean Harry Kane? Uh, and Ten Hag just does a uh, look. Harry Kane, it is Harry Kane. It is. Of course. And he goes, and he goes, Harry Kane will get you 30 goals. He's mm. proven. I, in, in a nutshell, I'm paraphrasing here. In a nutshell, I couldn't get that. I wasn't allowed to get it. So I had to get a kid who is not there yet. And that's not fair to compare him to Harry Kane. He needs time, you know? Absolutely. And then they and sort of brought up the sure. Casemiro yes. thing and De Jong thing as well. Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What was the what was the exact quote on that one? Or? I don't know the but the, essentially he was sort of playing, you know, saying well to play like an Ajax sort of play uh, style. You had to have a player like Frankie De Jong obviously really helps that process. Yeah. But we couldn't get him. Now he didn't. He must be said he didn't say. And then we got Casemiro as an alternative. He was suggesting about you know Frankie and Casemiro playing together. So the notion that Eric Ten Hag didn't want Casemiro, which I've always pushed back on because if he didn't want him, he plays him every week. <laughs> like he's a big, he's a fan of Casemiro. But his point was to, again, to sort of round it out was, you know, it, w- it would be, the process would be quicker if we got established players who could do it right now. Yeah, that's couldn't his get, point. We couldn't, his main get those, point. we couldn't get those players. So we had to go younger. That takes a little bit of extra time. Oh, and by the way, some of the other players we did get, i.e. he did say Mason Mount, he said he's been injured all season. So those players that I wanted to make the next step with haven't been available or it's going to take more time. And that was kind of his point. And the pushback on that, like some people would say, is, well, look, not every manager gets all of their players that they want. So you kind of have to make do. Now, if you say that again, that means you want the manager to be sacked, obviously. Um, but I, again, I thought it was a very open and honest interview with that. And he, and he made some very good points. He did. I'm glad that he's done that, though. That's good. I hope that's kind of... And the club are clever. They know when the right moments to have those to have those conversations, to kind of calm things down. Because they, you know, they're not mugs to really... They can see that the last couple of interviews haven't gone down well. Pressers. And pressers, you know what it's like. After the game, you're just pissed off. You just chat rubbish. You know what you I mean? They like, called them out again on that as well. In the last yeah, yeah, he called, he called he called him out in, in that one as well when he was saying um he said and again paraphrasing, but he was sort it was it once again it was about the everyone's up for sale and he basically said that they just talk a load of nonsense. You know, we're we're linked to two hundred players and all that kind of stuff and it's just ridiculous. And what was what was funny and I don't know if you've noticed this flex is over the last few weeks since he started banning people, <laughs> since he started a few, a few goes back. I don't know about I don't know if I've ever seen so many journalists that are in that room come out and be like, you know, well, he's had it very tough this season, Eric. (laughs) You know what I mean? And good, because that's what you got to do. They get, don't treat them like your friends because they're not. Because the moment it goes bad, or if they hear you say something, they will throw you under the bus. So don't try and get them on your side. Have a go back, rule of an iron fist. The blueprint is there with Sir Alex, isn't it? Of going, no. If you talk shit, that. I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to ban you. And next thing you know, I, I saw Rob Dawson write a nice thing. I saw Jamie Jackson being like, he spoke very well in that interview. He's cha- that I, Jamie Jackson, I don't know what's happened to him. <laughs> so I mean, I mean they're, they're all starting to do it. And then the people that don't like him, that's, that, their, their mind's not going to be changed. Sammy Luckers isn't going to come out and write glow and peace by Eric Tanag, is he? Of course oh, he's can not. I, can I, KG, before you come, can I put this to you then? Because I was, I saw a clip of HP, Harry Panera, big him up. Uh, on his inside scoop. And he was saying that the reason why he can't like rock with Ten Hag anymore is because of these press conferences. He's saying like, the reason why people um, like got with Klopp and Arteta and these, you know, when people compare to that is because when it was going bad, like these guys said it was rubbish. Like this is not good enough. Like they were honest with like the assessment of what the fans are seeing. So it correlated. So that allows the fans to go, at least this guy is saying, this is not good. That's not good we need to change this. Like we, it's easy to get on board. And he was saying, I can't rock with it because he's just, what he's saying in the, in the presses is absurd. We're dynamic. We're exciting. This that obviously we, I remember you saying to me that you took it as fighting talk. You can't bully me anymore. Of course he has to do that. But it was just interesting to see how he say, nah, that's why I'm done with him because it's, you're just lying at this point. You can still sort of say, we're not good at X. We're not good at Y. Like don't lie to me and say like, we play exciting football. We're dynamic. We play good mm-hmm. football. We don't. We we actually don't do that. So where do you stand on that? And you mm-hmm. as well. What do you guys stand on that? 
Do you think he does that to um, not kind of give him the satisfaction? Because after a game like, uh, say, Coventry or Burnley, when he he knows we haven't played well, we haven't played well in those games. We've we've had stinkers, particularly again at the end of the Coventry one, or after like the the Burnley one, and he knows the soundbite they're looking for. He, they yeah. want him to come out and be like, "We were terrible today. We were rubbish." Blah blah blah. And he goes so far in the opposite direction because he does this a lot. He goes so far in the opposite direction where he goes like, "We're one of the most dynamic." Is it, is it bad if he? But is it bad if he gives them the soundbite? I, that's accurate. I, is that bad I, to say? Yeah. We weren't good today. Why is that bad? Because he can't win. He can't win either way. This is where I do defend it. So that's he what cannot, I'm saying. So just think of the fans he then. Win. He can't. No, he can't win either way, can he? Because he comes down. If he goes, if he goes, <laughs> if he goes, we're we're rubbish. We're terrible. And singles out individual players. We start talking about statements on how social media and how he can throw players yeah. into the bus. Yeah. Not individual players though. Not individual Even players. Oh, but I'm saying matter. if you can't win, if he doesn't have to help the fans, then he's also. Mm. They'll go, he's lost a dressing room. He's lost a dressing room. I can't believe he would do that. Jose Mourinho throwing, throwing players under the bus. He, that's what they would say. He can't win in that. That's why I think what we need to do as well, he's got to stop paying as much attention to what he says in these press conferences because they're just bollocks. They're bullshit. They're just, they're, it's a bunch of nonsense. I saw the other day, people freak out when he said, we're not going to sell our whole squad. And they went, nothing's going to change. We're not going to get rid of these players, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, of course we're not going to sell our whole squad. Like, why are we, why are we, freaking out about what he's saying to the media when let's face it like half of it's going to be true half of it's just going to be lip service because you're talking to the media and it's best to keep him out of an arm's reach he can't if he came out and said we're rubbish then he would have been thrown oh my the god i don't even think he needs to say that i i think we're undercooking i don't know maybe because he does say we it. play bad but he does say I, we play bad yeah, he does, he does say mean, that right but what i'm saying is is that i think we're undercooking the fact that there's also a huge, we're just ignoring the whole bit of like a whole big bunch of fans that actually, if he was more honest, could would actually say, you know what, at least he's seeing what I'm seeing. I'm, uh, there are fans that are really concerned because you could say it's because you're not deciphering what he's saying because some fans won't do that. Some fans want to look to the manager as our leader, as the guy's going to take us forward. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you just saw. And if I hear you saying we really good, we play exciting football. We do this. We do. I'm not asking you to cuss out the players. I'm not asking you to say, and this guy was shit and he was terrible. And all see, I'm not, I don't need to say that. But to say the complete opposite in a time where it can come across as tone deaf to the fans to say, like, okay, the media are going to write what they're going to write. Don't worry yeah. about getting them on side. But you're yeah. addressing the fans. We all look to you in those moments when we've emotionally been attached to what we've just seen. And we all know we played shit. And we see you going, I tell you what, um, we play dynamic and exciting and good football. We don't. You know what? We don't. He does, I'm, does I'm going to give you like a, I'm, like, a, like a life, well, it's kind of like a life analogy type thing that I saw. It was like the family was getting through something, yeah, and there was one family member strong the whole way through. We saw no, like, no chinks in the armor, yeah? And in a sense, we kind of was looking to that person. We was kind of looking to that person like, oh, you know what? You're good. If you're good, this thing's still on the road, yeah? Then one day, they got we the family got some different type of news, and then that family member cracked and was like, it's over. Literally, it was like, because you're the figurehead, you're not allowed to do this in this moment. Like, because guess what? Now, you've always said, we're going to be this. We're going to be fine. We're going to do this. We're going to be fine. In No matter the weather, no matter if there's injuries, we'll find tactical solutions. Da -da -da -da. You've always said the, like, the right thing. You've always been positive. Now you've given up. Well, we're done. Because I don't even have the half. I don't even have close to the belief that you have. So for me as a manager, if my role is to motivate the players, keep the players locked in, keep the players really trying to understand my vision, I can't now in the media... Keep the fans on board. No, but then I have... While I've got things to fight, my biggest fight is the players because the fans can turn their opinion if we win. So I, while the, this, the fans are um, a, almost like a secondary thing, the only way I can make the fans happy again is by winning. The only way I can do win is if I have the players in the right mindset, motivated and still believing. Now, if I lose that, then it, it is what is it's results doing. does that. But then you can push back and say, well, at the end of the day, you'll lose players and you won't get players following what you're asking them to do because you're losing more games than you're winning. 
No, but yeah, that's right. You're not I, changing I, anything. Yeah, no, I think but he I'm does say that those things to players. The issue, the issue that is, you see, like even with the um. I'm playing a close close eye on, on Poster Coglu right now, yeah? And at first, beautiful football. At least you have a style of playing identity. Bro, they hate the style of playing identity. Right now... Well, what said, did he say yesterday? He said, mate, uh, what do you want to do? Write a dossier that we was awful. We played awful, mate. We didn't... Uh, he said it. Yes, no, but, I'm saying, but in fairness, in fairness, but this is my play. this is my point. This is my point when it comes to the media, yeah, because this is where I will defend him because he does say stuff like that, but it just doesn't get picked up as much because because it's like I'm, the Marcel thing, though. But, because but then again, you go and you say something else that counteracts that by saying we're good. I but, 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 but like I remember, I remember he did the um, he did the, uh, the one of the press conferences after the Coventry game. And he pushed back on the whole embarrassing thing because in his perception, you know, it's not embarrassing to make a cup final. And I get what he's saying with that. I, I do. I think the manner in which we got there was pretty embarrassing, but it's splitting hairs we all really, when it, it comes down. But, but, but his, his wider point was, well, I, don't feel, I don't feel embarrassed being an FA Cup final, which is fair. I, 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 <laughs> get, I, get, that. I, get, I get that. But he did then say later on, and, this, and I yeah. noticed this didn't get picked up at all. He said, um, I'm really angry at myself. I'm really angry at myself. I'm angry at my players. I'm angry at myself because I'm part of the team, and I'm angry at them because you know we didn't follow it out, and it wasn't and it wasn't good. And but that me. didn't. But that didn't. But that didn't get picked up. So he does say it. So that's why I say once again with the media, I don't think he wants to give them the satisfaction. And also, I do think part of it is a thing where, as much as we as fans would rather he talk about the players because a lot of the people's focus is these players are rubbish, these players are rubbish, these players are rubbish. He knows as the manager, I should take the heat because that's my responsibility. It's not them in front of the media, it's me. So I'll come out and say, I think we're a really good team, blah, blah, blah. There is no way he's not going into that dressing room afterwards that's and cutting them down to size, all that kind of stuff. I don't think they care what he says in the media because to their face, he'll tell them that they're shit and they're yeah. rubbish. Yeah, We've heard Ronaldo, these reports. Ronaldo told us that yeah. the directives and all the other stuff. We've heard they these said, things. What you see, what he's telling you one thing, to what he is in uh um we told IS guys told us this as well. And I get that yeah. bit. I'm just so I just say is, is, is just he doing paying more attention harm than to good it. to fans who if we if he wants them on side, my question is, is he doing more harm than good by doing this? Because like I said, the players, I'm not naive enough to think that when he's going into the meetings and stuff, he's not gonna he's not saying everything's completely fine, we're playing really well. Keep doing what you're doing. I know he's not saying that. Absolutely. You my thing wait. is actually my thing is actually just fans. Leave the media, Hi, leave the players. I'm talking about fans and like you his how he's coming across. Fickle. Because also, because when because when it was going wrong and you're saying, well, City City struggled here as well, mate. Right? Like, yeah, but you, you can't. Know what? I don't want to hear that as a fan. No, but I'm saying he cannot worry about the fan. The job is too big to what do you call it. I've got big bigger. Like, I'm, if I'm spinning plates, while the fans is a big element of football, I just can't focus on that right so now. So keep. So you're saying if so say it gets say say tomorrow night, sort of tomorrow night. Say on Monday night, we get spun by Palace, right? Let's just create a scenario. I don't know. Just so I'm not saying something that's wild. Let's just say in the same vein of how we have been throwing away games. It was the same thing we've seen. Let's say it was end-to-end. Eze, Lalise on a counter-attack, opening us up. 2-2 like two, two, or something kids. like that. It's 2-2 two, two again. Or it's 2-2. Two, 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 or we like lost 2-1. Mateta, yeah. nice goal. You know, they had loads of chances. They kept, they kept banging down the door. We conceded late. The usual thing happened. And he says, I don't know. He says the same thing again. We, we we played good. We're still we played dynamic. We played dynamic football. You know it's exciting. Or he said, you know, Selhurst Park is obviously a tough place to come, and just did the same thing again. If he said it. Anything he says is gonna not go. But this well. is yeah. That's, that's this is that's exactly what I was gonna say. KG. I think legitimately though, and this is and this, I think this is our problem as fans. We can't take it either way. We can't take it if he comes out and goes, we're a good team. We also wouldn't be able to take it if he came out and said that was an absolute terrible... But I, I think it works. I, I would take it I'm, less but, if he said that. But the reaction, to that, the, re, the reaction to that would be that he is cracked. He has lost the dressing room because he's throwing players under the bus now. The media... Would do the same thing they would they do I with a positive point. So. They would agree. Yeah, flex. If, they, if, yeah. he, if, he, if he came out, if honestly, flex, finally flex, saying the truth. If he if he came out flex, if, no, if, he, came, if he came that. out, if he yeah. came out and said, if he came out and said we were absolutely terrible today, that soundbite will be played for the next seventy two hours, even longer than that. The same way that when he does these positive ones, they get overplayed. It's the same. They let just, me, let me say, the result is clear. We wasn't good enough today. 
the result echoes whatever he says. So if he comes out and he goes, we're the most dynamic team, that gets played and that gets played over and over. If he comes out and says, we were absolutely awful today, I don't know what's wrong with us, that will get played over and over and over. He that's cannot my point. win. No, that's Wait. exactly my point. The fact that it's the fact that whatever he says is going to get recycled, I'd rather him say what it actually is with our eyes. That's exactly my point. If he says, no. if he says we played good, we're a dynamic, we're exciting, but we lost 2-1 against Palace... It's going to get recycled. If, if everyone doing this saying, this guy's clueless. The media are running with it saying, Ten Hag said they played good. Well, I suppose oh it's what, no, what would, you rather, would you rather be Would you rather be deluded or would you rather be cracking? Because that, that's well, literally no, the question, isn't no, it? No, I'd rather accept, that, I'd rather say what I question. see. I'd rather imagine well, saying what he's wrong, though, but, then but, that's, but that's what they were saying. They were saying he's cracking. If he if he starts to really say the we're playing terrible. Right, but they can say that the same way that they're saying he's deluded. That's what I mean. So you can't win. No, but what I'm saying is I don't care what the media say because like you said, the media are going to do the thing. I'm saying as a fan, if you're asking me, I would prefer him to say, just clearly not good enough today. I don't, I don't want the spin no, of like, again, we actually no, played good. And that's what I'm I don't saying. want it because we didn't play good. No, he might not be is. able to. That's the thing. He might not Why? be able to. Because to KG's point, KG's point is as well, saying that, okay, maybe you as a fan might want to hear that. But that's just like, he, he has to think bigger. He has to think about the media and the perception and the effect that the media will have on the they fans have, as well. But he has it by saying that by doing the deluded thing, they're doing no, it on him. Not, but you're calling it. That's what I'm saying. You're using the wrong word, though, because not deluded. I have to be positive about my what do you call it? I have to. No, talk, that's deluded, bro. No, he said we not, played good when we didn't. No, because you're, but he doesn't mean it. I, It'll no, be deluded if, you, if, if right, he actually so meant it. He doesn't mean it. No, yeah, I'm yeah, saying, yeah. He has to take your positive. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> It's a press of course, up. you have to lie to the media. It's a press conference. That's what it's used to be. Other managers don't. No, yes, because you do. <laughs> you other absolutely do. Not all the Look time. You see, Pep, say, Pep loses games yeah, and goes, it's the best performance I've ever seen. It's the best performance I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, exactly. Because he has that. Because he's protecting his team. So everyone loves. Because he, he wouldn't but come out that day and be like, when you're this bad, terrible. You can't call a spade a spade. I'm sorry. When you're this shit, you can't just keep saying, no, exciting and we're dynamic. That's bullshit. No, because, no, it's not that. It's basically. You want these guys, on, guys to get into. On, you want this guy to get. You want this team to get into gear. You do now. When the, the funny thing is, if he comes out and says all these players are rubbish, or even if he says, "Well, they blame these players," they're gonna say, "Well, you you bought some of these players in." I've seen the pushback now. The when Sancho had that um great game in the um in the Champions League, they were like, "You're telling me Sancho's rubbish?" Then it's him. He's the one that's ruining it. So now all of a sudden, the players that we um people would have said haven't shown their thing in the past. The, the the argument is, well, why have you made them rubbish then? You're the one that's killed them. See, he could come out and say, well, these players are not good enough. They'll the point straight back at him. So, it, again, while it, it will feel good for you in the moment, it's not going to do enough. It will still, him coming out cussing the players will still have a, a probably a more negative effect because guess what i have to go to war for him again I I think he has to cuss the players. and and also and also does. look at look at managers right. that have look at manage look at managers that have done it in the past jose did it famously and he lost his job ralph rannick was talking about the club but he was also okay. talking about the players when he's when ralph rannick's talking about open heart surgery he means get rid of these players they're not good enough. Oh, i'm not asking, like you that. guys i don't you but, guys are but, thinking i'm saying to go for individual players i'm not no, I'm, I'm not saying that i'm not saying that either he can say we he can do the accountability thing for himself he has done that. He has done but, that. Right, but what I'm saying is that the point that the point what I'm saying is he's undoing that at the point you say we are exciting and we play good. Yeah, you just or we go that you, far. You're, you're losing, but exactly that's my point. He's going no, too far. Again, that is flex, exactly my point. Understand. You have to understand. You're like, doing you were, it. Bro. You, were, you were saying going too far. Two, a couple seconds ago, you were saying just be honest about how we played. So I agree. Exactly. Going too, so he's going I, too far by yeah, saying we were really good. We were dynamic. But that's, we were that's, but that's not what you were saying a second ago. You were saying you were saying more like be be honest or whatever. He can still say he well, goes, I think so we say we wasn't good enough. I thought he no, he can still say I think we've got good players. Maybe today wasn't our day. He doesn't have to go that far. But I still don't think he has to go like. Oh, we we've been playing terrible. We're not playing very well. Blah blah blah. I think he's just again. It's a press conference. You're Even, there to defend yourself, not throw other people under the bus. It just you, makes things worse. You just got to get out there, <laughs> out of get, the room, and get out of the room. But I remember when a player said in a post game thingy, like it's it's very honest. A player said, um, "We wasn't ready for this game." One of our players said that. They rinsed him. I never forget him either. Why wasn't you ready? How dare a pro pro professional player come out and say we yeah, wasn't? Or when they say they, they, than, they, wanted they wanted it more than, more than us, than they us. ran more All than us. Yeah. It doesn't work. Like that's the honest. That's the most honest you can say. They wanted it more than us, which is true because it showed in the game. 
it doesn't wash with anyone. It does. I never heard someone say when the man said they wanted more than us, and the, the media's gone. Fair enough. It's true. Absolutely. And I'm not. I, and I, I get yeah, that. I mean, I'm like, not saying that they have to. I'm just saying, it's 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 the same way as like when we and I'm using Marcel as an example because he's the person I think of most with this. If it's like the shit sandwich thing, you can say some things that actually are right. You can say some things in there that we agree with. But my point is you can begin to lose people or lose to what you say gets lost in translation whereby that. And I'm saying, actually, I think it would be better for him if he was a little more honest or wasn't as wasn't going too far left by dropping things like I can get the whole like, you know, the effort that was there. You know, we, we we tried to do what we needed to do, but essentially it wasn't good enough today. We we as a unit, we as a collective, you know, we, we, we can't be conceded that many shots. We know that. We need to get into the drawing board. We need to get back to Carrington. We need to work on this on Monday. You know, people can again, the media still can say it's not work. I, I get all that. I'm not I'm not silly. I know that. But as soon as you decide to pivot on this bit, guys, this is where I'm at. As soon as you pivot and even more so and go, well, we we actually we actually play really well. We played good. We we we're, we're exciting. We played with dynamic. I think to me, a... you're now going into a bit where going, you're taking the piss. I no, I, Flex, piss. I honestly feel that he's in um and obviously post game and stuff, he's in defensive mode. So he'll say in defense, and, I'm, and I'm just saying that's hurting it, him. I'm yeah, saying that's it, hurting him more than anything. It, it's but then he can't worry. If I'm if I'm him, I'm not that's not gonna be my main worry. I've got yeah, a, I was gonna say I've got, I don't think I've that hurts as the much team. results. I've got to feel the team. And well, results is the biggest thing, hundred percent. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's like, wow, like I'm just gonna let it drop. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let that play drop over there, and hopefully I can get them back on side because we see now. So you like, think you should keep doing it then? If we don't win another game for the rest of the season, in, no, in, in them four that, passes, that language just... will change. That language will change, and then it'll become when the when it finally changes, and he's on the three, and he that's self preservation mode. That's when you said what you lot were seeing in some of the interviews, where when a manager starts to just to protect himself and his his legacy, so he can get his next club. That's even worse. I don't want it to get there. I'm saying right now, he has to try his best to motivate. And it's four games left. You haven't thrown your players under the bus at this point. Why start now with four games left? Nah, bro. And the final as well. I don't want to lose these men. I'm not saying throwing final. players under the bus, though. I'm but I don't think there's that. any way. But the, the, he, he won't say. I'm saying won't. don't say the mad stuff. I'm no, just but, saying leave that out. Everything else. No, he, will say we played, he could say we played bad. But the problem is, because we're the, one of the biggest clubs in the world, well, we will identify and define, well, who's he talking about? And then there'll be newspaper articles because it always snowballs into something bigger. Like, so he's, he's still saying that, it, though. Like Owen said, yeah, in but, these things, I think, he is saying he to, we didn't this do is this. Where, but this is where that. I say I think he has to be careful because even if he's talking about, you know, not na even naming players individually, when he does go too negative, he will know... That will that trickles over to them, and I, I do think he just after a bad result, I think, and I, I think this is actually a positive quality of a manager is where you just you take all the criticism yourself. You get people talking about you as opposed to talking about your team because you go out and say mad shit. Like I, yeah. I do think that's a positive thing to do. Yeah. Now I'm with you, Flex, when I say like maybe you don't go too far, but I kind of do see what KG said. Like he's just he's just being very defensive afterwards, and also mm. speaking for myself, like. I don't really care because I don't believe that's what he means anyway. <laughs> when he's coming out and he's going like, we're the most dynamic team, I'm like, wait, I don't think he really believed that anyway. So it's just bullshit. It's just, it's just, it's just I think we, you have to see those press conferences and interviews for what they are. They're just, they're just nonsense. They're just Puff fluff pieces. after the game. They are, yeah. they are after the game. And I do think that. Because you've got the character, though, got the character and, and, to, to, to manipulate the media and to, to, we've seen other managers with big characters, big personalities. They can have the media eating out of their hand if, if you've got it. If you, you haven't got it, you haven't. When it's I getting well, and if they turn on you, it doesn't go yeah. that way. When it's getting I'm, well, it's fine. But when they decide to turn on you, then you you get that. Like, and you can see the ones that the media uh, media darlings and they love them at the moment. I remember when Klopp first came in, they could do no wrong. Now, um, now people kind of get the knives out because obviously complaining about the time of fixtures and stuff. He's really vicious when he when he responds to some members in the media. Like, bro, it just it just goes like this. This is. We, unfortunately, Ten Hag has stepped into a situation where he's not been the media darling, and he's done things that get will get a lot of clicks. The Ronaldo thing was huge, great for the media. Um, Sancho was huge. There's many moments, key high point moments in this season that you know they've got what they wanted, and other managers that have been at this club have not been under the same scrutiny. But it is what it is.
I I said I agree. I think that I'm more focused on you know what happens on the pitch, those results, and after the game, almost like I, I at the moment anyway, I'm so numb after the game. I don't really really don't care what he <laughs> what he says because you've, yeah, you've seen it because you've seen because you've seen it. So when he comes out and says that oh, we're most dynamic, I'm like oh. if when he comes out and goes we played for our first twenty minutes, I go it matter, I played over ninety. Or even if we win, and he goes like and if he came out and said well, we were okay today, I still wouldn't even really listen to that. <laughs> like it's just for me. It's more about like the bigger issues. It's about like his future. It's about the results on the pitch, the play style, and the stuff afterwards. Like I get your point, Flex, when you go, well, maybe you shouldn't go too far. But I don't think he knows any other way. I don't expect him to change anytime soon when it comes to it. And does that, I suppose, if it, if you were a fan, I mean, does that change your like opinion on him or is your perception of him when he comes out and says that? I can speak for me. I, for, I'm just. I mean, maybe I can only really speak for me. I, I got my my sort of ideology of how I think it would help in the wider context. I think more people could understand a little bit more where he was coming from if he didn't say mad shit. For me personally, I just think like those, I'm with him until he just goes a bit too, and i like, I don't think you should do that, but I get it. But do you I believe get, him when he says it. that? Do you believe him when he says that? That'd be the biggest problem. Because I, because I, do you say you, I so you believe I, I, well, that he I kind of think, that. I kind of think, I know he's not saying that to a player, so I suppose no, but I don't, as a fan, me personally, that rubs me up the wrong way, personally. Right. I don't like it. I, I, I feel like there's nothing wrong. I think if you've got good skills with it, there's, you can easily say, you know, take accountability together as a group or even keep it on you without saying, we play good football. We are dynamic. We are exciting. Because that I, is a lie. Do you remember when what's the name said? Um, and it's so hard because there's always extremes in it. I never forget yeah, Conte's course. one. Conte kept it so real. Yeah. I mean, but that, what, where, where, where are the players' one? Players? That one. Players? Mm. Yeah. But yeah. that was that was like I'm out. I'm gone. That was like. That, but that, yeah, that was him. That was him. I've had enough. I want to get out of here. Like, yeah, I want to. I want to set up now. That, yeah, that was a Ronaldo yeah. thing. So that, that you was have to building. Get rid of me after this, Remember yeah. that was building. You know, he said I can't win. Yeah. Yeah. But and also he does have the, his whole career to say like Joe say. Them men are that. So mm. Ten Hag has got a reputation. No, he doesn't have a reputation of saying that. Yeah. So, no, I'm saying it's a person. so he's doing his character. His character is I'm gonna put a positive spin on things, I'm just gonna motivate. And in, in front of the media, I back my players all the way. Outside of this, I can be who I am. Because that's that's good, that's for me. Because that's where I'm at with it as well. Because and even again, I've been critical of Ten Hag, but when he says those things, it doesn't change my opinion on him because I don't think he believes it. <laughs> I think he's yeah. just I think he before he goes into that room, he just goes, Oh fuck. I've got to talk to these bloody like journalists again. And then you just do the answers that you go, I don't even believe. Like when you're at a job interview and you go, I'm talking shit here. I don't even believe yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a really hard worker. Yeah, but, you know then would you, yeah <laughs> but then would you add the other stuff in as well, though? Of course. Of course, you sell yourself. No, no, the real like, no, like, I, I got one of my, one of my greatest like, weaknesses is that I'm I kept trustworthy. too much. I got, yeah. sat, I got, sat, I got my, sacked for stealing, but I'm trustworthy. I'm really No, my greatest weakness is I, I, I care too much. <laughs> you did. My weakness is a strength. Yeah, my I, is I, I I take too long to um what, what's it what do you call it uh, the attention to detail. Some people say I always try like I always try to give the perfect thing when I should just yeah. put something out. Absolutely, no, but they're positives. But if you're when, if on your CV it says you, you are, so why did you leave your last job? Oh, I got sacked for stealing. I'm mm. really trustworthy though. I've I, I'm do you know what I'm really I actually I'm so trustworthy that everyone just trusts me. It says you got sacked for stealing, mate. Yeah, I know, but that's it's it's too far. But then, but then also, but also as well, far. when he when he leaves the room, when he leaves the room, <laughs> when they do the <laughs> interviews for being late all the time. I know, but you know, I'm always on time though. I am actually really punctual. It says you were late all the time. That's why they let you go, mate. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to boost my I'm trying to boost my character. Exactly. But he's not gonna say it. He's not gonna say, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm 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 really lazy <laughs> and I never do any work. I he the, the way I bet those press conferences work, yeah, and you've been in them more than me, yeah. But when he leaves the room, I bet those journalists tend to get to each other and go, Well, he was talking shit. And when he leaves the room, he goes, he just, I bet he leaves and goes a bunch of assholes. You know, it's, like yeah. you know what I mean? It's just I just don't think we should put too much yeah. stock in it because it's just okay. like I you know, thought I'd just bring that to the. Game. I thought I would just bring that to see what you guys think. I get it can uh, be annoying to fans. Think, like obviously yeah. when you've lost I and then you see him go, you know, we're a really good team, and you go, obviously we're not. But but then that's again from my point of view. I just go, well, he's just that's, yeah. he's just saying what he's saying. I don't expect All him right. to. Episode fourteen of the Trinity, powered by Dangor. Uh, we unpacked a lot. What would it be like if uh, basically Tuchel and Eric Ten Hag swapped? 
really is what Can we you discussed. Imagine? Be crazy. Uh, what would that look like? We spoke about Eric fighting back. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Do you like this from Eric? I, I do. I do in that con in that sense, like the yes. Gary Neville interview, sort of saying I should have got players like this. I do like that. And then we sort of concluded with a um, bit of a, not two on one, but definitely I think Owen and KG more on a, aligned with like, I'm saying don't go past the boundary of delusion. Eric, uh, KG and, and Owen say, listen, the guy's got to preserve himself. He doesn't give a shit about the media. Well, I'm more saying I, mean, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, and they don't mind. I don't care. I don't even watch the press <laughs> yeah. after. Yeah. Don't, they don't, they don't, after they don't mind. Things, I don't watch that show. So let us know yeah. in the comments. How do you feel? Do you care about Ten Hag in the presses? Is he annoying you when he says these things? Does it rub you up the wrong way, which is how I feel? Or are you like KG and Owen where it's like, pff, it's gone past the point of listening. Like he, he he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. It's and they're just, press conferences. they're just press conferences. Just they? a presser. You know I mean? Let yeah. us know. And make sure you smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we'll see you on episode 15 of the Also, Trinity. Flex, where can they get all their Trinity podcasts from they in audio form? They can get all their Trinity podcasts in audio form on your favourite streaming platforms like Apple Music, like Google, like Spotify. So the link is in the video description below for that. And um, you can get this podcast on all of those streaming platforms there. Episode 15 of the Trinity Powered by Dangor next week. We'll see you then.